I <sighs> can't believe I'm coming back here. This is my first day back, getting back into the studio since uh, leaving for our uh, vacation on our holidays. So let's see how it looks. Hopefully everything still looks the same. Uh, yeah, same studio, messy. Uh, not too bad, I think. All right. That is. I have no idea what that is. Um. All right, we got some cleanup to do, and I will show you guys what we're gonna be doing today. Let's see if this will work. I already forgot how to set up a camera. Um. Man, welcome back, you guys. It's good to be back. Really good to see you guys. If you guys are new here to this channel, this is stained glass DIY. And for those of you that's been here before. Really appreciate you. Thank you for coming back. I was traveling out of the country and actually made it back, but we kind of stayed in and quarantine. So I haven't been back to this studio after like about 10 days um, of quarantine and um, sitting at home. And taking care of a one year old is pretty crazy. I don't know if you guys, anybody has a one year old. Um, you probably know the drill. That has been taking up a lot of time. That's my excuse anyways uh, for not getting any videos up. But I wanted to start this year, um, this video, to show all the stuff that we've done on this channel um, since the beginning. So for those of you who've been here before, um, this would be a nice summary of all the stuff that we've done together. If you guys are new here, uh, this would be a good chance to kind of see some of the things that you can do if you're a beginner to stained glass. Um, some of these projects can actually be your very first, or most of these projects can be your very first um, stained glass project. And the biggest thing that I want for you guys to take from this is that you can do this on your own as a DIY project. It's a lot of fun, it's not as hard as you think, and you'll love it that you've created something with your own hands, and that is probably the most rewarding thing. Even if it comes out sloppy, you're gonna be really proud of it. That's my encouragement, and I hope you can join us and start making your own stained glass. Hopefully this sets us up for the new year um, to see the cool stuff that we've done and uh, we can know that we're gonna be making some really amazing stuff um, in the days to come. We're definitely gonna make some cool stuff. All right, so that's it, let's get going. Well, first things first, that tip right there you can see um, has kind of snapped. I don't know what happened, I'm guessing when I was transporting it uh, moving it around and stuff and that kind of got tapped. It looks like it's being held on just by that copper foil. Just the one single copper foil right there. Uh, man, almost lost it. I think we can glue it back, it's possible, and maybe redo that copper foil. Or just glue it back. I think I'm just gonna try to glue it and nobody is ever gonna know. Um, but yeah, kind of sucks. I love it though, that it looks amazing, all, this, all the, um, the copper foil overlays that you can do onto your glass. I think that looks incredible. Um, it was the first time that I took it up and decided to kind of add foil on there and did some cuts around it. Um, so these gives you like the accents onto your glass and then you solder onto it. That was fun, that was really fun to try and play with it just brings out like a lot of the features as you can see um, from the artwork from the glass yeah it's a bummer though that tip kind of broke off I don't know but definitely this is one of my favorite absolute favorite pieces um, because it just looks incredible um, the black patina I could say didn't turn out as nicely as I wanted um, also my soldering was probably not as good but what the heck um, I freaking love this one and the red eyes on that is crucial um, hard to see when I have it hanging at, on my wall but if you have it by the window then yeah for sure it, it, it comes through yeah and I made sure the streaks on the glass there was kind of flowing in the same direction um, just to kind of give it the look of the hair 
on, on the wolf there. Yeah, this is definitely one of my favorite pieces, but this is what I would strive for and to do um, more of. A lot more intricate pieces, a lot more copper foil overlays, and um, just to get better on soldering, get better at the patina. Oh man, what the? Yeah, don't keep working on that. That thing's gonna fall off. Um, yeah, I should be more careful with that. <laughs> wow, that was scary. Super scary. Um, yeah, don't break that off and uh, let's move on to the next thing. All right, the honeycomb here, I believe, should be your first stained glass project. Straight cuts are way easier to do than the curved cuts. And since the honeycomb is all straight cuts, um, I believe this will be a very, very good beginner project. So breaking it down, we're looking at one hexagonal shape um, that you need to cut, and you need to do that multiple times to be able to put together a honeycomb. Um, you'll get a chance to use your glass cutter um, to get used to that, and you're doing the cuts. Those straight cuts are going to be fairly easy. Um, they're also smaller cuts as well. So you'll get those pieces in no time, and then um, even after cutting it, you probably don't even have to grind anything much uh, because they are straight cuts. So you can get away with using the carborundum stone, um, the grinding stone, and then just grind a little bit of it just so they all match nicely. You can go with one piece just to make it easy for you, like a necklace or something that a lot of people do. Um, or you can add them all up and continue to make it as big as you'd like. And it's great because it allows you the possibilities of using different colors, different um, glass like mirrors you can do, or you can get into different textures. Um, basically the possibilities is just open for you. And this one came out really nice. I'm happy that I made the patina black. Um, you can also just keep it silver and leave it as is and it'll look just as nice. We got the mirror. This is a different uh, work that we did uh, actually, the copper patina came out really nice. I'm doing this uh, cleaning right now, and it just brings back all that shine again. So it's reassuring to know that you can clean your piece and bring back the shine. Um, however, the glass itself, the mirror, uh, had some bleeding in it, this, this blackening that gets into the coating of the mirror. I did some spray on it, and it didn't work out as well. Um, but other people have been telling me to use nail polish on the sides, those those edges that you cut. And so I think that's the next steps and we're gonna try that again. I think a mirror project uh, could look really stunning when done right. Um, so we're gonna have to try this again and I would love to revisit. This star, uh, one of the very first ones that I did for this channel, I was trying to show some of the easiest things that you can do and a star came to mind because it was easy to draw for me. And then splitting it up into those shapes um, also made sense because of the straight cuts again. I thought it was nice for the color options that you could choose and uh, to get practice on the glass cutting. Uh, super simple and fast project. And by all means, this is not in order at all, so you guys can probably tell. This next one here is one of the more complicated feathers. I wanted to actually turn a feather into a geometric feather, um, so I started drawing lines through the feather and kind of playing with some shapes and, and different designs. Um, I came up with this one and it looks really awesome to me, I think, but um, it was a pain to do. There were so many pieces, very, very small pieces, and that sliver on the stem of the feather, I broke so many of those in trying to make this feather. That's a very hard cut to do, a very thin glass piece. I, I know I've got a couple of different colors um, in that type. This is my very first stained glass project ever. Um, I decided to start and I picked the feather, drew up the design and just went for it. This is um, a pretty bad job, but everything came together and I'm very proud of it because I was able to cut the glass and I was able to foil and uh, solder everything together just to see that and know that you did it with your hands. I'm very, very proud of it. So if I can do this, for sure you guys can do this. You can see the solder lines are 
messy all over, um, but once you do it, I'm sure you're going to get hooked and you just want to keep trying and making more fun projects. Um, so this one is the color wheel, the pinwheel that I had put together. This really started uh, my stained glass journey from seeing a piece like this um, at a shop. I don't remember the colors that they had on it. I don't even remember how many pieces or slices were in the circle. I wanted to try it out um, to see how it would look. And this turned out excellent um, with the colors and everything. If you guys tried this, I think you'll have a great time with it. The black patina um, came out so good and I have to remember how I did that because um, the black patina turned out really shiny and overall a really, really awesome project. Don't even remember if this was a project. Yeah, there is no video on this. This was the first project that I did trying to cut curves, um, trying to figure out how to cut curves, um, and this was the project. So the moon made sense. You have some crescent curves um, to do the circular piece. And this was just the two colors, two glass pieces. I think it's a very good start for anyone uh, looking to do some curved cuts, um, just to get familiar with that. You can see the solder lines again, it's pretty bad. Foiling job is really bad, um, but I'm happy with it because it is the first project doing the curves. And this project with the fire, um, this is a part of the camp stuff that I was doing. And so I wanted to make a fire. You can see those are, they look like eggs, but those are stones. Some, I hope you can see that. This is a very first early piece that I did as well. So the soldering is a little bit sloppy. It could be a lot better and, and more smooth at those joints there. Um, the black patina, I think that also was probably one of my first ones. It didn't come out as nice. I probably should have done just logs um, on the base there. So this is the first project um, ever on this channel. This feather was the first video. I had some ideas of how to do stained glass and just uh, decided I'm going to do a video on it. So this is our first feather together. Um, the solder lines somehow looks pretty good. It looks really smooth and I think it is probably due to the fact that it's just a straight shot. This would help you um, get more comfortable with the soldering, like the less lines you have. Um, the longer the line, it's going to be easier to kind of drag that on. And the solder still looks really shiny and new. Um, that was our very first project f on the first video. And finally, we got this 3D, um, I guess it's a terrarium, this hanging terrarium. And you can see it's made out of simple geometric shapes. We're doing triangles and you cut those triangles and then you piece them together. Um, to do the 3D, the best thing is to tape everything together before soldering. So you hold the shape together and then start tacking around the, the tape. And then um, you can just take that off and start soldering away. Um, this one was excellent it's in my opinion because uh, I have air plants and they look great in it. It lets the light through and you can just hang this anywhere. We're going to try to get into more 3D projects. Looking forward to making more of these hopefully and um, coming up with maybe some different designs and different ideas on the glass terrariums. And hopefully you guys have made something similar. Um, I'd love to hear about it too if you have tried this out. now. This piece here is, has a lot of meaning to me um, only because I was sent to Norway for work um, and I stayed there for many weeks. And so um, this was one of the islands that I had um, taken like a weekend trip to and it's called Utsira Island. Um, such an amazing place. So this coat of arms design uh, I just love how it's just the two colors, very simple. Even the design is very simple. Um, turned out fantastic and a pretty fun project. Um, so this is part of that camping um, stained glass pieces that I've done. And I made the TP. I wanted to go with the TP and just came up with the design, trying to make it simple again, keeping with the straighter cuts. Um, this definitely was one of those first ones. And then I added this uh, special thing here at the tip, at the top of the TP. Uh, so those are bent wires, um, so I just bent the wires and then soldered them to the top um, just so it looks like it's the top of the TP of the stick sticking out there. A good project, um, turned out great, 
nice and simple. And we've got the moon here. This is a huge moon. I think it's about like um, maybe eight or nine inches, I forget. This has deep curves um, and I was terrified at cutting this. I still am with doing anything like this. Going from that small one, trying to go to the bigger one is um, was I think the next step that I was trying to do and trying to show you guys, um, trying to see if it could be done. And so this was the result. I love how smooth and clean it turned out. Um, the silver shines really nice and the colors. Yeah, give it a shot if you're looking to do stained glass and maybe you've done some straighter cuts already. Give the moon a shot and uh, you might be surprised at how it turns out. Definitely one of my favorite pieces. Um, this is the other feather, just another uh, different color. I did the stem with the white instead of the clear and then just um, some different colors in there. So another pretty cool one, getting some practice. Same project, this one's got a little stubby stem right there you can see. I, it did get cut off or I think it broke off and I just said screw it, we're just gonna use it and uh, just went with it. That glass is really cool, There's some textures right there on it. And another one, dang, I don't know, I think I did, I guess I did four of these. Um, this one's really nice just because of the colors and um, looks very much the same. Some iridescent in there, if you can see that, maybe I'll pick up from the camera, but yeah, this one, um, solder lines are getting a lot better and a lot smoother. Just take your time on the solder, sit there and go back, go over it, over and over. If it gets too hot, move it around. Don't get, don't come back until it cools off. And then, um, yeah, just more and more practice. Um, the, the webbing here, this one was a cool one because it was a little different. This one goes on the corners of a window, of a door frame. And uh, you'll see a lot of these. These were pretty popular. Um, I would say like a year or two, like two years ago. I wanted to try it out myself as well, so I just drew up the spider web, add some accents in there just to change it up a bit. This is all iridescent. I don't think it's picking up. Um, you're not gonna see that in the camera, but um, fully iridized glass. Yeah, you have to really be in the sunlight to see that. But that one is a fun one if you want to try some straight cuts and a little bit of curves. And then you guys know this toilet paper situation that we had to deal with um, in 2020 and among other things. Um, thought it'd be kind of funny to do. I actually have this sitting um, hanging on the wall in my bathroom. So some days I walk in thinking that is the real toilet paper. It's pretty trippy. It looks actually kind of real sometimes. Um, getting into the bathroom there. So that was a pretty fun one. Um, you guys could try that out. And this one is one of my favorite all time pieces. I made one before this one right here. I have one that I gave to our friends for their wedding. Um, these are all straight cuts, so it shouldn't be too hard for the triangles. There's just a lot of them. And then the feathers, as you might know, are those three feather designs. Um, that go along with it. But you can just do the Sri Yantra by itself. And the special thing on this is that the brass border um, is just a regular standard brass rod that I had bent uh, to frame the piece. And so that is a very unique piece of mine that um, I'm very happy that um, kind of came together pretty well. So as you can see, you can disconnect the feathers from the Sri Yantra. Um, I made it with the clasp, um, these lobster claws, I guess, that you can quickly remove. You can swap the feathers, so say you had different ones that you made, different colors or whatnot. You can just change them around um, just to kind of switch things up. I thought that was pretty clever to do, um, which I've never even switched out the feathers ever. Um, but yeah, gives you the possibilities to do that. And these feathers, if you haven't tried, if you haven't started, um, I have templates for these three feathers on my website. So please go check that out, stainedglassdiy.com, and uh, you can get that template. You can see the feathers, there's different patterns. There's the three-piece feather, the four-piece feather, and then the five-piece feather. So the three-piece will be easier and just keep going with that. You can make it bigger if you want a large feather. You can shrink it down. Um, talking about shrinking it down, I do have um, this moon and feather 
so that was a miniature size of this one of these feathers and just um, I kind of downsized it so you can hang that in your car we're looking at this um, seed of life project this one took me months to do I would have to say this is my best project to date um, because it looks absolutely stunning with even just the simple black and green colors and the bordering of this project I really think makes everything complete. The border is lead came and that was suggested to me by my instructor um, to use instead of any other frames because you're able to mold it and bend it easier and so I went with that and it fit perfectly on there and she also had me solder the uh, seed of life there to the frame so you can see how it leads up into the frame and it actually looks uniform and looks like one whole piece all together. This one came out um, excellent, the, the best that I've seen and so I'm um, very proud of it and hope uh, to make a lot more of those. Next up is this leaded piece uh, project. This is a completely different thing that we've ever done on this channel uh, because all the stuff that we've been doing is copper foiling and so now just getting into the leaded work um, I took a stained glass class and it was a whole lot of fun so I suggest anybody who has not taken a class you should even for copper foiling I think it could be fun and you could learn a lot. Uh, for me I've already done the copper foiling and leaded stuff was new to me. You can see the lines are nice and smooth because you're not soldering over it. You're only soldering the joints. And then the framing of the border just makes it all clean and neat. I love, love this piece as my first project. And we can look forward to doing more leaded work um, as I explore this some more and try to get into this with you guys for this year and just learn more about this side of stained glass the original side of stained glass and you guys i'm just remembering i'm remembering all these projects that i had given away so i didn't have them in possession but one of the earlier ones that we did uh, was this native american pattern that i had put stained glass into a picture frame these are all triangles straight cuts pieced together to form a pattern um, so that was a pretty special one we have the paper airplane uh, so we did that together i just drew up one of those ones that i remember how to fold and then turn that into stained glass. This comes back to all geometric shapes, all straight cuts, and piecing everything together except in the 3D form. Um, it turned out awesome. Hope you guys tried this one out. And then I made the simple box. Um, I was trying to play around with copper patina, but a simple box, regular square shapes, piece those together, and you can see you can start making different boxes um, starting with the square. And then we also did the wedding uh, card holder and that one was a fairly big piece um, so it can hold a lot of cards and also turn it into a terrarium so i would be making something similar something um, in about that size i believe there was one more uh, 3d piece that we did which was the triangle shelf we break it down they're all rectangle pieces put together um, to make the triangles and then to have that shelf in the middle um, this went out to our friends who own a shop I actually wanted this one for our, ourselves in our house, so we probably might revisit that um, try it out again. One last thing I did, which I think was a really easy project, um, are those incense holders. I have done a couple of those now. I believe you can make this and put it to use right away. Um, it's three pieces of glass. These are pretty easy cuts. I like this project. It was simple and fun, and then now I have some uh, neat glass to hold all the incense. I'd love to know if you guys have tried any of these. Um, please leave them in the comments and let me know which ones you have tried. Um, if you were successful, hopefully you had a good time with it. But if you want to get into this and you want to do stained glass, uh, remember we have some kits available on our website at stainedglassdiy.com slash shop. Uh, please check those out and I will be happy to answer any questions uh, to help you get started. Um, hopefully you can join us and start making some of these projects, maybe come up with your own. If you like this video, give it a like. It really helps the channel. Subscribe if you like to see more projects and videos like this. And I will see you guys next time. And we'll start doing some new projects.